In the mid-80s, the AIDS epidemic was in full flight in San Francisco. People realized that cannabis had a lot of medical properties and it was helping people live longer, better lives. Looked like a hippie, but I wasn't, right? You have to go and you buy your cannabis and then you go back home and you smoke your cannabis, you know, all by yourself, full of shame. I know a guy who's actually fairly successful uh, and he's on microdoses of cocaine almost daily. <laughs> Back to the blood again. The blood again. Blood again. Well fed again. Get it in. Okay. Bro. Yeah. The whole point is just to be chill. Handle your drugs. No matter what you do, no matter how you show them that cannabis makes money for communities. Cannabis keeps your communities cleaner and safer. Cannabis provides good jobs. Cannabis provides good training or, or whatever. It has safe a, it's access. It's a for net medicine. win. It's a safe access. It helps people with, with things. They're still going to hate it. I'm lucky enough that I had a show on Netflix. Jack and Jill went up the hill to have a little fun. Silly Jill forgot her pill, and now they have a son. Everybody go, oops, upside your head. Say, oops, upside your head. Oops, upside your head. Say, oops, upside your head. Boom, 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 bang. All right, that's, that's. All right, ICBC family, welcome to Where the World Meets Cannabis. Uh, we are on the grounds of Spanibus right now, the day before everything pops off. Uh, first the ICBC, then Spanibus. We're at the Auditory Cornelia, and we have a very special guest. Uh, we're right on stage here with the one and only. Um, how do you describe this man? He's the MC of the ICBC. He is prolific, one of the top cannabis comedians in the world, and just an all-around great guy. Ungayo Bilam, welcome hey, to the show, brother. Good to see you, dog. Boom, how you up. feeling? There you go. Respect. Feeling good, man. Just getting ready for a big... Uh, Big week here. Oh man, the the Barcelona uh, International Cannabis Business Conference is one of my favorite international cannabis business conferences. Uh, oh stop! No, I mean first of all, every international cannabis business conference is good, and I'm not blowing smoke up your ass. Like I, I do a lot of things, uh, but you know, me and Barcelona, we we vibe, we have a thing, we understand each other, we get along really well. So. No, you do love Barcelona. I, I know do. that about you. I know a lot of things about you because the sure. first time we met was. Exactly, almost exactly 30 years ago. Jeez, Louise. Yeah, and that was on, I'd like to say we met on Hate Ashbury, but we met on Lower Hate. Lower Hate, like Fillmore. around Fillmore? Yeah. How, was it Debbie? Or, yeah, 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 yeah. It was at the Hemporium. Wow. Yeah. And I, I, you walked in and I was doing some work there, and then you, you were looking at these books, and all of a sudden you like, you fucking did the the cabbage patch and the Bart Simpson in one move, right? It wasn't just running man, right? It wasn't just cabbage patch. You just went like you just busted out in in in, in a dance. And I was like, oh who's I was like, this is my man right here. Yeah. And next thing you know, we were we were uh we you were know homies and friends playing basketball, freestyling together. Basketball, freestyle, and doing events too. Doing back events, then. we played the Fillmore. We did, we did all those. Um, you helped produce all those Maritime Hall ones too, right? I didn't do the Maritime Hall, oh, okay, ones, uh, but I did the Hemp Expo, the one in Golden Gate Park. Oh yeah, I remember that. That's right. Well, why don't you tell us a little bit, Ungayo? Because yeah. really, that was the epicenter of what every where everything is at right right now. It was really the heart of the cannabis activism movement. Uh, the Bay Area was for for a long time. Could you uh, could you speak to that a little bit? Uh, yeah, man, I grew up, you know, I grew up in San Francisco, born and raised, uh, and right around, um, in the mid eighties when, when the HIV AIDS epidemic was at full flight in San Francisco, people realized that cannabis had a lot of medical properties and it was helping people live longer, better lives. And so people like Dennis Perone, people like Brownie Mary, they pushed really hard, uh, to, to make medical cannabis, at least, even more legal. I mean, San Francisco was always somewhat tolerated. I mean, if the Brown cops... And Mary would come into the hospitals, yeah, actually. Right, but they... if the cops wanted to bother you, they could. And so right. when it started to get bigger, when Brownie Mary would show up at the hospital with pot brownies, when Dennis Perone had his... He had the club. Dinner, he had, like, an open-air cannabis club. And, right. You know, his belief was always any form of uh, cannabis is medicinal cannabis. So he wasn't very strict about who he let in. Den yeah, Dennis was a character for sure. Oh yeah, man, rest in peace. He's the the fairy rest godmother of the medical cannabis industry. For yeah, sure. he has Dennis interested too, and a libertarian yeah. too, and down yeah. with Harvey Milk from 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 all from that hardcore all libertarian. That. Dennis yeah, Brewer. man, Dennis was uh, he was a force of nature. So yeah, so I learned from those guys. I learned from hanging out with Jack Hare and and uh, Debbie and Don from the Cannabis Action Network and Steph from Americans Debbie for Safe Debbie Goldsberry, Access. Uh, shout out Don Duncan, Don Duncan, Steph uh, Steph Sharer, yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
So Chris Conrad, Mickey Norris, Chris and Mickey, right, right. Uh, um, I can't remember everybody's Lynette name. Shaw. Lynette Shaw. Huh? Write yeah. it down. <laughs> yeah, Lynette Shaw for sure, and a bunch of people. So that's that's where you know that's where I, I got my start, and we we did all the we, we produced events, we did cannabis comedy fundraisers, we did man so many things. Prop two fifteen. Uh, I, I ran West Coast Cannabis Magazine for a while when we were trying to get Prop 19 passed before the um, the, the other one passed. I remember that. And the all t- and that uh, the whole, this whole time you're doing comedy. You're traveling the whole time. around. You're doing comedy the whole around time. America, around Europe yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, I guess so, huh? Uh, yeah. Wow, that's pretty <laughs> impressive. Sometimes. Well, I, I never really think about it because I'm doing it. And then and then remember when we did the Cannabis Cup in uh, Amsterdam? You you were the MC of the Cannabis Cup in like two ninety nine. The High Times Cup in ninety nine. And yeah, Fishbone yeah, yeah. was the headline at the Melkveg. At the Melkveg. And, and Control Machete from oh, Mexico shit. was there too. They were they were fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, that was yeah. high. And right. That, I got into weed activism so I could go see the bands. Really. So. <laughs> Well, you've always been a fishbone head. Always. Hardcore. Always. I saw him open for the Beastie Boys. I don't mind getting old because I can say I saw Fishbone open for the Beastie Boys. I've opened for him that a is couple old. times. That is dating yourself. Uh, you've I've, opened for, what, what with the, the Slack Mob? Back with, with the most chill Slack Mob and at the Milk Vag when I was the MC for the for the uh, High Times Cannabis Cup. So you did it all, man. You're, so you're hardcore activist, hardcore spokesperson, comedian, but you also had this dope band in the 90s called the Slack Mob. I did have a band <laughs> in the 90s. King Slack was your, was your moniker. 2000s. The one and only King Slack. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And in fact, one of my greatest moments, 15 Minutes of Fame, which is only about three minutes, is when you invited me up at the Fillmore and it was a, it, you were headlining that show and it was a 16 and yeah. up show and it was almost completely full. We, it was were, like we were pretty people. popular for a hot minute. It, it was so fun. For sure. And we did for that sure. freestyle with Psychokinetics and Bazooka Psycho- Joe. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. That was a good time. He it, could go all the way. I found that tape. I sent that tape to Mark, our DJ Dil, e, DJ Ilmita. You got to ask Mark. He might have that. Oh He's got a copy God, of it somewhere. Oh, my God. That'd be crazy to listen yeah, yeah, back yeah. to. And that was 30 years ago. That was, <laughs> that was 30 Maybe years 29. Ago. I mean, you know, I was I was six. I was very smart and spry. I was just big for my age. I like looked Stewie older. and shit. Right. The black Stewie and shit. Stone six-year-old. <laughs> six foot six-year-old. <laughs> six foot six-year-old. Oh, my God. Uh, um, yeah. So, those are magical times. And, and, and then you were living about, in Europe doing your thing. I got to Europe a little bit later. Yeah, I mean, I was there the pre-215. And yeah. then we did the... I worked with Jack and Debbie and, and Ed and all that stuff. And so I, that's how we really just got, got down. And then, of course, I was... I was from Minneapolis and, you know, I was from the, the city. Right. And so I always was, you know, I came out to, to, to Cali and like, I didn't know there were black hippies and shit until <laughs> I got to California. Right. And I was like, this is amazing. Black people you do know? everything. I know. I know. Well, I knew they did everything, but I just didn't know there were hippies, I guess, almost. Yeah. I didn't know there were, because, because I get to Santa Cruz in like 92 and it's like, I'm dropping into the last vestiges of the summer of love and shit. Sure. Right. Sure. And, uh, but what I, but what I brought to the game was like, they were just, I I looked like a hippie, but I wasn't, right? Sure. And, uh, even though I respect the hippies and respected the hippies, um, but what I brought, what I think I brought to the game was, uh, just a little flavor and a work ethic that wasn't quite. quite Yeah, that Minnesota work ethic, that Puritan work ethic. Yeah. Yeah. We're, you, the, we're the West Coast, man. Take but, your time. Yeah, no, but yet you were you were you were all you were all King Slack, but yet you were getting. I looked up to you so much because you were getting, you were getting so much done. You were, you, I mean, dude, you had you you were you were the fucking man in San Francisco. Oh, thanks. And uh, yeah, I don't just know going, about all that, but you know, dude. Okay, so here's a we story. Did my thing. Here, I think this represents Ungayo's character. <laughs> we were playing basketball one day, and we come back to your brownstone. Where you're living in the mission, yeah. right? Yeah. And there, and the, you would pass your car. Sure. And there's a there's a dude in your car. And I'm thinking, oh man, it's about to be on, or, or you know what? Are, and you're like, oh hey Fred. <laughs> and I was like, you know, and and I was you like, know, man. so you taught me this compa- like because I'm from the city and we we have compassion, uh, uh, you know, obviously, but then you get anesthetized to it when sure. you just see this shit everywhere. You're like, what the it's fuck hard. can I do? It's hard, and you know, it just makes me angry. Every time I see a homeless person, I get angry at. At humankind, yeah. Right? Well, I didn't know there could be such. I never saw such a pious gesture in my life. I think, and it was actually, uh, it was actually a, a, 
it 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 changed me. It was like, oh. damn, I gotta wow, I gotta get with this. This is the next level consciousness, right here. Sure, Fred. Sure. Oh, Fred. Yeah, thanks. You know, yeah, yeah man. Fred, I mean, like, he didn't have any place to stay, so yes, yeah, so you let him stay in your car, man. Yeah. That was like some not every day, but <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't no Mercedes either. <laughs> no, it was like a green Pontiac, <laughs> like a four door Pontiac. <laughs> yeah, so, but why not? Man? Why not? Everybody needs help. So, t- so now we've been doing these shows now for, in Europe since two seventeen. Yeah, uh, tell us a little bit about. Tell us why you like Barcelona so much because it obviously uh, is a special town for many different reasons. Las vibras son fantástico. Um, la gente es muy amable. La comida está muy delicioso y bueno. Y yo hablo español suficiente para fumar y comer. Um, it's mm-hmm. just like if, you know, I'm a West Coast kid and I know this is the South of Spain, but it's got a very United States West Coast vibe in that it's like a, it's on the water. Everybody's cool. It's not, you know, it's like San Francisco in the 90s. It's not super expensive. So you can do your thing. You have a little job and still be in a band or still DJ or still do art and, and have a nice apartment. And, and yeah, yeah. And, and kick it. And everybody here is cool, man. I've never I haven't met one dickhead in Barcelona yet. No, it's crazy uh, chill, right? The search continues. I'm <laughs> sure I'm sure there is one. It is a San Diego vibe, a little old no, school, like from the it does not. N- 90s and shit. I do not. I disagree. I mean, just like the looking at the tr- palm trees Okay, and maybe superficially, uh-huh. it has a San Diego vibe. Yeah. But like the vibe itself. San Diego, as well, the I'm West Coast Euro- goes, is really closer to Bakersfield than it is oh, to Portland. I'm gonna be honest. Yeah, well, I'm you be said Portland. You didn't say like LA. You said Portland. So that was the two extremes. <laughs> yeah, right? fair so I, 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 I agree with that. <laughs> but the weather's nice. The weed's yeah. good. The food's good. Like you said, yeah. everything's it's good. Easy to walk around. So the public transportation is great. So what what's up with the the coffee shop scene or the uh, social club scene here? Is it popping? Is it uh, what what if, if you if, for folks who haven't been to Barcelona, what can they expect? Okay, so, and, yeah. and can anybody just pop up? And, I will and break up it in the down mix? to you. Yeah. While cannabis is still technically illegal in Spain, uh, their Supreme Court decided a long time ago that you have a right to put drugs in your body if you want Mm -hmm. and so they have social clubs so you have to join a social club and the social club is allowed to grow weed for you and you have to know somebody you have to be sponsored as a member you can't just be Uh walking into the social clubs you gotta know somebody you gotta know somebody yeah no we're we're on camera bro I appreciate it it's my fly up too so you gotta know somebody you have to have a letter of recommendation to get in and then when you're in there you can buy cannabis uh but you're not supposed to take it with you outside of the club, uh-huh. right? So nobody ever does that. Uh-huh. Right, right. And and they're all very different. Some are really like sports bars or some are like gaming bars and some are like co-working offices and some are just huh? like little chill nightclubs or coffee shops. And so there's a lot of different vibes. You can find the one you like or there's generally one in the neighborhood if you can get invited to one. I belong to like 10. 10? <laughs> I think so. I think so. How do you get invited? Is that is what type of process is that? Um, I'm lucky enough that I had a show on Netflix. So if I send them an Instagram message and go, "Hey, I'd like to uh, come to your club," they're like, "Yes, of course." What are some two? But, but some of my friends would be like, "Hey, we're coming to Barcelona. Uh, how do we get to these clubs?" And then I'll send I'll send the the club a message to be like, "My good friend Eric is coming into town in April. He would love like to bad. love to be a member." And I'm like, "Yeah, of course." Uh huh. And if you had to pick three of your favorite clubs, oh, that's easy. Uh, Dr. Do. Dr. Do. D O U. Shout out. Fantastic. Shout out. La Calada. La Calada. K A L A D A. Mm-hmm. They're, they're really cool. They have great variety, uh, a really good vibe, and they're very active in the community. They mm-hmm. push, they do a lot of events and they push a lot of things for cannabis acceptance and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, the third one, that's tough because there's so many good ones. I mean, there's Gorilla, there's Shoko, there's G13, HQ. there's uh, Terpy, HQ, right? I got to get to all these spots this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be broke, but I'll okay. be high. Okay, so you've been to Amsterdam and yes. quite a bit, and uh, we've I, I, I lived in Amsterdam for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. How does the Amsterdam coffee shop scene compare to the Span- Spain social club scene is it i know it's similar in some ways they're very similar how's it how's it i mean how's the, it diff- what's the, the difference the amsterdam coffee shop scene is way more wide open right you could just walk in off the street to any right coffee shop and buy a little something and sit there right and, and take and it consume with you. it or take right. and take it with you yeah. although it's still technically illegal 
in Amsterdam, it's just uh, isn't there a five gram it's toler- tolerated? If there's a five gram thing. Or yeah, something, I don't. Or? I don't know. I mean, I never carry more than a few grams on me, uh, so I don't know about that. But they they also want you to be way more discreet, and I, and I think the problems that they're having in Amsterdam and the problems that they're kind of having in Barcelona right now, because I was talking to some people and they say they're the police have been doing more inspections, and they have a new mayor who's maybe not as happy with cannabis clubs as as the city used to be, and the Dutch are always trying to kick the tourists out. Uh, up in Amsterdam, they're always trying to. Well, you get, and you know, and it's because that. people show up and they, they Act especially fool. in Amsterdam, they're kind of drunk, and then then they walk into the coffee shop, and then they get stoned. So now they're cross faded, right? And they're amateurs, yeah. and so now they're stumbling around. They're stool. falling off the thing. They're falling in the canal. They're starting fights, bro. Yeah. The whole point is just to be chill, handle your drugs, yeah. Right, be an adult. Yeah, I think that's. I think that's a great philosophy in general. For, I try. That's that's one of my have fun, be yourself, handle your drugs, be you responsible know. for your own drug use. Yeah, right. Well, because we all are really. And we should truth, be. Truth be we told, be. I mean, well, that's the mantra. You can't legislate morality. No, but also, I mean, but it's also things like this. You know, like uh, I throw cannabis events, and I like to keep them no to low alcohol. One, it keeps people from getting crossfaded and puking on my on my floors. Two, it's funny to me to watch the boozers have to sneak off to a corner to have a drink, and I can come over and bust them. <laughs> Are you guys drinking beer? <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? I think <laughs> right? the opposite. <laughs> of... <laughs> go I'm, I'm always smoking a big joint. Like, hey, hey, no, don't be doing drugs in here, man. Well, it, was, it was Dr. Carl Hart that told me one day, don't be drug prejudice. No, don't be drug prejudice. And I thought that was so People do drugs, man. I used to be, I mean, I, I'm not... I don't do a lot of drugs. I do a few drugs a lot, like I always like to say. Yeah. But uh, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm more understanding of people who do drugs that I would consider just hand, my vibe. Just handle it. Yeah. Just, it's, be an adult. Yeah. I, I know a guy who's actually fairly successful, uh, and he's on microdoses of cocaine almost daily. <laughs> yeah. I know people who take heroin who are successful CEOs. So you never know. No, well, I mean, you never know. Well, Carl Hart would say, uh, to invoke uh, Dr. Carl Hart again, yeah. is he said that no matter whether the drugs are legal or not, there's always going to be a consistent. People are going to do drugs. And in terms of like uh, doing them res- responsibly, there's like maybe 1.5% or something. Yeah. I don't remember the exact yeah, yeah, yeah. thing. Will become uh, addicted. Addicts to whatever right. it De- is. To the detriment. To the detriment. To their detriment. Right. Not just yeah. a habitual user, like, say, a coffee user or, well, or a Well, right. I guess you smoker. have to define addiction. Right. That's, that's a habit. You have to define addiction. I mean, I guess, I guess ultimately, uh, we're, I think we're all addicted to certain things. But well, how, caffeine is addictive. How Nicotine fun. is addictive. Dr- for sure. Jogging is addictive. Yoga is addictive. For sure. So, like you say, to the, de- to to the, the detriment. detriment. Are you doing it responsibly? Right. Are you handling your shit? Right. Um, are you functional in society? Right. And high functioning cannabis user. Yeah, high functioning cannabis <laughs> user. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> I'm a dad. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, so the coffee. Sh- so, but, but, and so, in, you're saying in Amsterdam, it's more, it's more wide open, and yeah. it's more, dis- it's more discreet in. In, uh, oh yeah! Because I know you don't really see the coffee you shops off you the don't street. See them? It's like there's, the secret doors. The, yeah, street. yeah, 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 yeah. You, there's like a, maybe a little camera, or maybe you see their logo, right? You see the logo of the of the social club, and then so you then you press the doorbell, and then a little door opens. And, and do they serve alcohol in, in these clubs? Yeah, you get beer, coffee, yeah, some snacks. Yeah, yeah. No in, hard liquor. In Amsterdam, there was like three types of coffee shops. There was that like total local coffee shop. There was like the 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 total like tourist coffee shop, and right, then there was right, the right. hybrids where the, the, the locals and the tourists were there. Like, remember the Rokerai on Lights Up? The Rokerai was very popular. I think I went there. I think the last time I went there was like 2020. Right before everything went crazy. Oh, really? I was in Amsterdam a year ago, and it, it doesn't exist anymore. It's not, oh. well, at least it's not in that place anymore. Right, right, right. But they I thought moved. that was one of the dopest ones, and they had, they had, uh, they served alcohol, and but not all coffee shops did serve no, alcohol. No, no. And then there were some places in Amsterdam where you could go that were bars that allowed smoking. Yes. Right, but you couldn't get the weed there. No, and that's that. That should be a problem. You know, if you if you, I mean, I think we need more social clubs and more. I mean. A lot of the times in this push toward legalization, r- people are really treating alcohol, or not alcohol, but cannabis, like it's like it's a shameful, dirty drug. So you have to go and you buy your cannabis, and then you go back home and you smoke your cannabis, you know, all by yourself, full of shame. But 
weed is a social drug. You stand in a circle when you smoke it. Everybody's an equal. Everyone's a peer. Uh, cannabis clubs, cannabis social clubs, uh, medical cannabis dispensaries, they were all kind of social hubs uh, before legalization in, in the states at least. And then the states are like, well, no, nobody can consume outside. You just have to buy it and go away. But the clubs are coming back. And I think we need more of those. We need, you should be able to pop down to your local, same way you pop down to your local bar and have a drink after work or whatever. You should be able to pop down to the local, have a puff or have some sort of cannabis cocktail, play some chess with your homies watch the game or whatever, and then go home. So that's the one cool thing about Amsterdam, though, is that it is wide open, and you can just have your weed and take it and smoke it and bring it and what, what Generally, as what, long as you're not a dick. Yeah, well, and that's in general any for anything, right? Yeah. Um, do you think, what do you think, what do you think the fate of, of uh, Barcelona's uh, social club scene is? I don't know enough about the current politics of Barcelona really to talk about it, but I hope that they would stay and even be grandfathered uh, into some legalism. even more more accepted mm -hmm. and and for sure i think it would be great if uh i mean i really like the the smoothness and the discretion of it right now i don't think we necessarily need to see giant ads for cannabis clubs everywhere people know where to go mm -hmm. the, the social media will tell you where to go and the, the whole point is to ask a homie so but uh, you know where you don't have to Maybe it's not so much a private club as it is now, right? You become a member. You pay a membership fee. You become a member of, of the club in, in, in Spain. Uh, but maybe you could just have some drop-ins or walk-ins. That, that would be cool. Yeah, I think that's where, I mean, I, it, it seems like implementation is 90% of the law. Yeah. And so, you know, the, the, the... I mean, it wouldn't be hard. No. <laughs> but, but you're fighting 100 years of, of anti-cannabis propaganda, right? You're fighting a small percentage of people who were just going to... Listen, if common sense and science were going to win the day, cannabis would have never have been made illegal, right? right? So we have to overcome negative stereotypes and, and negative propaganda. And there are a percentage of people that you're not going to reach. And those cats are going to be the loudest and they're going to be the biggest haters. And no matter what you do, no matter how you show them that cannabis makes money for communities, cannabis keeps your communities cleaner and safer, cannabis provides good jobs, cannabis provides good training or, or whatever. It's safe a, it's access a for net medicine, win. So. It's a safe access. It helps people with, with things. They're still going to hate it. Yeah. Right? And so you have to figure out a way to work around you, I mean, you could work with them up to a point, but they're not really going to go so for So what it. about social cl uh, clubs in the state? Are there any places where you can smoke weed inside? My, my in house, you just come <laughs> over. In I mean, Colorado do something? It, where they Colorado's just starting some. Uh, Nevada's got a couple. Um, there's New Woo in Las Vegas, which is on uh, indigenous land, so they their rules are completely different, but they're opening a whole new, uh, like a Las Vegas certified social club in Vegas right now. You, but isn't that fun? So this is so interesting that yeah, I think... Vegas used to be so mean about weed. They would throw you oh, under a jail yeah. for the sea. Like, 10 uh, years for a joint or whatever. Oh, oh yeah. That wasn't, that wasn't out was so like long. 1975, 1983. They, they used to have signs up. Right? I mean, I don't remember that, that fear and loathing yeah, picture. Yeah, 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 where, yeah, yeah. You know, But even, even, yeah. And they got all the, the drugs 80s. in the car and the one joint's gonna <laughs> put them for life or whatever. Pretty much. Um. Do, uh, so. So. But. So. 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 Berlin, let's talk about Berlin for a second. Yes. Um. I know that's another city that you adore. I, I also love Berlin. Say. Yeah. Ich liebe Berlin. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I've been working on my I'm trying to decide what my German accent is going to be like. I think I'm going to go with a high pitched voice like, "Oh, guten Morgen, Fräulein." <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, we are not hungry. Yeah, it's good to see you. Yeah. The stereotypical Indiana Jones villain <laughs> right, exactly. type. Uh, <laughs> That's wrong. Don't, don't uh, tell the Germans I said that. Oh, uh, yeah, well, no, you won't tell anyone. This won't go anywhere. <laughs> uh, uh, we love Berlin, but here's what I like about Berlin. Yeah. Like, it's not legal in Berlin, right? No. But it is, it feels legal because you can smoke anywhere in Berlin. And this is what I think is a big difference between the American weed culture and, or culture and, and European culture is that they still smoke in Europe, you know? They still, right. they still right. smoke. Everyone. Even healthy people <laughs> smoke, and you're talking about tobacco smoke. Just, tobacco just smoke, smoke in just general. Smoke in general. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I. Yeah. So it's so in Berlin some ways, does not care. 
Also, yeah, so in you some ride ways, your bike everywhere, you eat healthy, and you smoke a few cigarettes. And it feels like weed is legal. It feels it feels it's more free, even even though it's not technically legal. But just the fact that you can smoke it outside, and in America we smoke outside too, right? I mean, shit. In thirty years ago, we'd smoke inside in San Francisco at the con- concerts. It was just right. Just, it wasn't a thing. And then smoking just got really taboo in general. Yeah, it's really funny. It's really funny about that. Uh, because, you know, back in the more illegal days of cannabis, when we go to throw a cannabis event, you know, I would tell the person who owned the warehouse or whatever, listen, there's going to be a lot of pot smoking here. And they'd be like, yeah, that's cool. As long as there's no cigarettes. Right, right. And now you, you go to a thing, you'd be like, we're going to throw a cannabis event. And they're like, uh, that's you a great idea, but you can't you smoke You can't smoke here. inside, right. Well, what do you mean we can't smoke inside? Well, you can't smoke anything. You can't smoke tobacco. You can't smoke cannabis. You just, we don't, right. it's a smoke-free environment. That's my point. All right, I'm like, well, then we can't, we can't use your venue. I mean, listen, in their defense, your venue is going to smell like weed for a couple of days exactly. after we've left. Exactly. I mean, and, and I have to tell some people sometimes, I'm like, yeah, we're going to throw a cannabis event. Is it cool? And they're like, yeah, man, that's cool. And I'm like, no, you don't understand. Is it cool? Right? <laughs> it's a, this is a serious cannabis event. Everybody's going to have their own joint. There's going to be a six-foot vapor bag flying around. There's, every table is going to have a bong. Like, the room is going to be full. All the windows are going to be open. Your block There's might smell a little bit. Well, right, yeah. right. So just be ready. Yeah, well, but that's isn't that why Europe's cool? Because you can just light up outside and or yeah, at a cafe in Berlin or whatever. Cafe, Berlin. I mean, where I live in Slovenia in Ljubljana, extremely cannabis friendly city. Is it legal technically? I, no, but it's decriminalized. It's decriminalized, and and people literally smoke everywhere. In people that grow town. it everywhere in Every, Slovenia. Too. Slovenia like everybody's is, got it in the garden next to the tomatoes and the strawberries. I think it's the most. I, I wrote this article that was. Slightly unjust, but meant, mainly meant to be poetic in a Gonzo style, saying that Slovenia was the most cannabis-friendly nation in in the world. And it's a stretch, I understand it, but I qualif- I made interesting qualifiers. Yeah, 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 why? Yeah. Hey, it's the shit is you feel so safe. You, no one's gonna they, bust. They your grow balls. pretty good weed too. I'm not gonna lie. Because they're all nerdy, smart people. You know, they do everything well. The How do you feel about Slovenia? Do you like Slovenia? I kind of like Slovenia. <laughs> you married one, bro. <laughs> but I fell in love with Slovenia before I fell in love with a Slovenian girl. <laughs> Trying to become the ambassador to Slovenia. <laughs> hey, like, hey, we'll see, man. We'll see. American if they'll have me. Cannabis ambassador I'm just to Slovenia. blessed to be there, bro. But I know you like Slovenia, too. I love Slovenia. You've been I had a s- great time. And we're going to be back there in September, September 13th. Yeah, we'll 13th. be there September 13th. Science and Technology Forum. Yep, Science and Technology. We're taking it to the next level. Back to, back to Lake Bled? Back to Lake Bled. Why don't you tell the people how what back Lake Bled? Back to the Bled again. The Bled again. Back to the Bled again. The Bled again. Bled again. Well fed again. Get it in. Okay. Uh, it was, uh, man, it's beautiful out there. It's the, the like, what do you call it? The Balkan Alps or whatever? Back to the Bled again. The Ule- Jule- uh, what do we call them, the, you guys? They're not the Urals. U- what? Yuliski. The Yuliski. The Yuliski. Yuliskalpen. Yuliskalpen. Yeah, I mean, I can speak a little Slovenian, but somehow I can't really get that one. Yeah. Uh, I, I forgot all my Slovenian the minute we left, but I was there for three days and it was starting to come around. Yeah, well, you know, it's such an easy language to learn. You just have to listen. <laughs> no, you do your thing. You, you, you're like, oh, I speak many different languages. Hashish. Yeah, <laughs> listen, people always want to sell me weed, so that's the first thing. Listen, I get in, in Slovenia, I catch 30% of the words, but I catch 80% of the vibes. And so that's the important thing, right? But Lake Bled's dope, right? Lake Bled is beautiful, and you can walk around it, and people parasail and It's like Switzerland, boat, right? And yeah, it is very, very, uh, very alpine. It, well, it's the Alps. Yeah. It's, it's the other side of the Alps. So it's very yeah. alpine. Very beautiful. The air is fresh and clean. The food was really good. Uh, man, I had a great time. And and Ljubljana was cool too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We yeah, went yeah, over yeah. to Pop's Pizza. It was like a suburb that thinks it's a city. <laughs> or it's a city that acts like a suburb. <laughs> it's a, we, call it a, we call it a village. Oh, okay. Fair enough. So it's a, it's a, it's the smallest capital in Yeah. Europe. I mean, it's, it's, got the big city vibe right it's got a few giant buildings and some old school just a little bit it has a big city city vibe. halls just a and tiny little bit just a little bit of a big city vibe like it understands that it's the capital city it definitely understands right? that. it's just you know yeah. it's, it's smaller yeah it's very quaint it's quaint that's a good word for it yeah. but i loved it i had a great time yeah it's super chill yeah, it might man. might not be quite your speed of barcelona and i mean berlin. it's not new york or, or berlin for but, sure not but i could i would you know, I could live there in the spring. <laughs> I wouldn't be there in the summer. 
<laughs> you could winter in Slovenia. I could I could spring in summer. <laughs> I don't ski a lot. Uh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us, what are you doing now? Besides ICBC, what's Ungai Obilam up to? Is uh, you got any TV shows coming up? Or I'm some working on some things or... like that. Um, I have a tra- you know everybody wants to be uh, the travel log guy, so I'm working on my my little travel log TV show. Uh, I'm chopping up with the cats at Connected uh, TV on some things. I'm going to be hosting the Arizona Growers Cup um, and, the, and the Growers Cup series. So we just did the Missouri Growers Cup, doing the Arizona Growers Cup, and I think we're bringing one to New York as well. Mm-hmm. You can follow me on all the on the Instagrams and whatnot, NGAIO420, to get the latest news. Um, I'm doing some comedy shows, man, writing for High Times and Leafly, the, the usual stuff. Prolific. Pro, pro, yeah. That's what they say. I always think I'm not doing enough. And then I look back six months later, I'm like, hey, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Slow down. <laughs> Take as, a day off. As long as you're getting paid. Yes. Yeah, I could, I, that's a good idea. Yeah, what a concept. Getting right? paid. I, I should talk to somebody about that. <laughs> I'm fortunate enough to, you know, to get paid for stuff I do for free, but the people who pay me know I do it for free. <laughs> so they, they take advantage. It sounds like you'd uh, fit in just fine in Slovenia. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, well, dude, uh, thanks so much, That's bro, it? for having. That was so fast. That's it. We the don't time have flies. Too long. Yeah, I that mean, was beautiful. We, we, I mean, I know we're before very we interesting. go, bro, and yeah. I'm, you know, thank you, dog. Like the the International Cannabis Business Conference is fantastic. I'm not, and I'm not just kissing your ass because you know I would tell you if it sucked. I would be the first in line to be like, bro, we gotta get our shit together. Right. But it's a good time, man, and we've come a long way from Medford, Oregon. Right. Yeah. And uh, we hope. And it's, from Ashland, it's just, it's just it's just impressive. I'm always just impressed because when you first said Berlin, me and everybody, what the what? Why? And then Everyone a month thought. before it, Berlin was like, "We're starting a medical cannabis program," and we're like, "Alex, you're a genius." Yeah, <laughs> so, however you, whatever you caught with the Zeitgeist or your little connection to the universe, man, keep that shit up. Do that shit. Thanks, it's dog. fire, bro. Well, I appreciate so you appreciate being you, there man. with me on Respect. the journey, dog, and yeah. all that shit. Yeah, boom, boom, boom. Uh-huh. yeah, all that. All right, thanks, huh? Where the world meet cannabis. We love you. Thanks, and Guy Obilam. We'll see you next time. Big up, boom. Hasta luego. View Gluck. Blah 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 blah. Yeah, by standing on the wall Get your back off I heard all the people say Get down on it 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 Every Thursday Get down on it What you really want Get down on it Shout out to the people What? What, what you, you gonna, gonna do? do? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get on your groove. <laughs> if, if you want, want your body, body to move, move huh? <laughs> tell me, baby. baby. <laughs> you know it. And you don't. Yeah, it's good. You know it.